Although Scott Heron never completed his undergraduate degree, he was admitted to the writing seminars at Johns Hopkins University, where he received an M.A. in creative writing in 1972. His master's thesis was titled Circle of Stone. Beginning in 1972, Scott Heron taught literature and creative writing for several years as a full-time lecturer at University of the District of Columbia, then known as Federal City College, in Washington, D.C. while maintaining his music career. Scott Heron began his recording career with the LP Small Talk at 125th and Lenox in 1970. Bob Tila of Flying Dutchman Records produced the album, and Scott Heron was accompanied by Eddie Knowles and Charlie Saunders on conga and David Barnes on percussion and vocals. The album's 14 tracks dealt with themes such as the superficiality of television and mass consumerism, the hypocrisy of some would-be black revolutionaries, and white middle-class ignorance of the difficulties faced by inner-city residents. The album also included the spoken word poem Whitey on the Moon. In the liner notes, Scott Heron acknowledged as influences Richie Havens, John Coltrane, Otis Redding, Jose Feliciano, Billie Holiday, Langston Hughes, Malcolm X, Huey Newton, Nina Simone, and longtime collaborator Brian Jackson. Scott Heron's 1971 album Pieces of a Man used more conventional song structures than the loose, spoken word feel of small talk. He was joined by Jackson, Johnny Pate as conductor, Ron Carter on bass and bass guitar, drummer Bernard Pretty Purdy, Burt Jones playing electric guitar, and Hubert Laws on flute and saxophone, with Tila producing again. Scott Heron's third album, Free Will, was released in 1972. Jackson, Purdy, Laws, Knowles, and Saunders all returned to play on Free Will and were joined by Jerry Jemmett playing bass, David Spinoza on guitar, and Horace Ott, arranger and conductor. Carter later said about Scott Heron's voice, He wasn't a great singer, but, with that voice, if he had whispered it would have been dynamic. It was a voice like you would have for Shakespeare. In 1974, he recorded another collaboration with Brian Jackson, Winter in America, with Bob Adams on drums and Danny Bowens on bass. Winter in America has been regarded by many critics as the two musicians' most artistic effort. The following year, Scott Heron and Jackson released Midnight Band, The First Minute of a New Day. In 1975, he released the single, Johannesburg, a rallying cry for the end of apartheid in South Africa. The song would be reissued, in 12 inches single form, together with, Waiting for the Axe to Fall, and, B Movie, in 1983. A live album, It's Your World, followed in 1976 and a recording of spoken poetry, The Mind of Gil Scott Heron, was released in 1978. Another success followed with the hit single, Angel Dust, which he recorded as a single with producer Malcolm Cecil. Angel Dust peaked at number 15 on the R&B charts in 1978. In 1979, Scott Heron played at the No Nukes concerts at Madison Square Garden. The concerts were organized by Musicians United for Safe Energy to protest the use of nuclear energy following the Three Mile Island accident. Scott Heron's song, We Almost Lost Detroit, was included in the No Nukes album of concert highlights. It alluded to a previous nuclear power plant accident and was also the title of a book by John G. Fuller. Scott Heron was a frequent critic of President Ronald Reagan and his conservative policies. Scott Heron recorded and released four albums during the 1980s, 1980 and Real Eyes, 1980, Reflections, 1981, and Moving Target, 1982. In February 1982, Ron Holloway joined the ensemble to play tenor saxophone. He toured extensively with Scott Heron and contributed to his next album, Moving Target, the same year. His tenor accompaniment is a prominent feature of the songs, Fast Lane, and Black History, 
the world. Holloway continued with Scott Heron until the summer of 1989, when he left to join Dizzy Gillespie. Several years later, Scott Heron would make cameo appearances on two of Ron Holloway's CDs, Scorcher, 1996, and Groove Update, 1998, both on the Fantasy, Milestone label.